how many of you have had an idea for something like um, a, a novel or a different kind of book you'd like to write, or maybe an invention, or an innovative new kind of business? You think, if I could just get this started, it'd be a big life-changing event. I actually suspect all of you, you're at a TED Talk for heaven's sakes, you're creative thinkers. You like new ideas, that's why you're here. Now, how many of you have published that book, or written for that matter? How many of you have patented that invention, or how many of you have opened that innovative new business? Yeah, a few. Well, I'd like to help you with that today, first by telling you a story, and then by giving you some discrete steps that you can take to move your idea forward. The story I'll begin on August 31st of 2014. On that day, the last commercial flight, U.S. commercial flight, left Liberia. I was on that plane. I'd been there working in the Ebola treatment units, managing the same disease that had already killed thousands of people and was closing the airspace behind us as we left. The next day, my wife picked me up from the airport and we went immediately to the closest hospital emergency room because I was infected. Yeah, by the way, you can't see it in the back, but the entire front row when I said that just kind of leaned back away from the little bit. <laughs> infected made you jump. Those back row seats are looking pretty good right now, aren't they? Yeah. Well, don't worry, if I'd had Ebola, you'd have known about it because it would have been a media circus just like what you saw in Atlanta and Dallas and New York City. Instead, I had a kind of infection that has killed thousands of times more people than has Ebola. I had a hospital-acquired resistant staph infection. I knew it, I was treated, and I'm fine. Now, in case you think you have to go to West Africa to contract such an infection, I want you to think again. According to the Center for Disease Control, right here in the United States, where you have this very sophisticated and expensive healthcare, every year, in excess of 700,000 people go to a healthcare facility for treatment, and they come out with a new infection. 700,000, right here. Even worse, a staggering 75,000 of those people don't come home at all. It kills them. By the way, most institutions put that number even higher. Think about that. It's like this entire audience dying almost every day right here. We've known about this problem for a long time, and a lot of work's being done, but in some ways, the problem's getting worse. In particular, the bacteria are getting more and more resistant to the antibiotics. They're back here out there now. We don't have anything that'll kill. Over 10 years ago, my wife and I we were at a dinner meeting, and the specialist was talking about the problem, and he decided to look at the hospital building itself. So he began to culture the doorknobs and the bed rails, even the walls. After a while, he said he just stopped because everything was positive. The whole hospital was colonized by these bacteria. And I'm not talking about things like you'd find on the floor in front of you or, or even in your kitchen or your garage. I'm talking about E. coli, pseudomonas, resistant staph like I had contracted. I came back from that thinking, well, first off, yuck. I mean, holy cow, I didn't want to touch anything. I was pushing the elevator buttons with my elbow, and you've done that before. Anyway, so I thought, there has to be something we can do about this part of the problem. So I had this idea. What if you could make a machine that when you put it into the room, it would flood the room with the kind of energy that, would get a, that kills bacteria? It'd get around all the little corners, all the surfaces that people otherwise might forget. What if you could make such a machine that would do that? So I called my brother David Deal, the guy's a lot smarter than I am, and I asked him what kind of energy would do such a thing. And he told me about UVC. It's a type of ultraviolet light, but it's not UV like you think about. It. It's an artificially created light. You have to make it. You don't find it in nature. And the way it works, it's destructive to DNA and RNA. And if you can get into the cells with enough energy, you create these double-stranded DNA breaks. And a double-stranded DNA break is universally fatal to every organism. There is no resistance to it. So I described the machine to him and asked him if he could build it. And he went to the local hardware store and electronic shop and a couple of things off the internet. And he built it in his apartment in Atlanta. And he called me the day after he turned it on for the first time. He said, well, first off, the remote control works. And then he said, all the mildew in my bathroom is now gone. I thought, holy cow, we are on to something. And by the way, if you understood the hygiene habits of my younger brother, you'd understand why we were so excited. <laughs> So he brought it to Charleston where we live and we, the hospital gave me solutions, different kinds of bacteria and it was, we were firing it off sometimes in my garage, sometimes in my office and my children helped me with it and we were uh, painting on pie plates and keypads and we got more and more sophisticated with it until finally we realized that we needed a sensor array in order to detect the room so the machine could tell you when it was done. We were fortunate enough to engage the, the services of a very gifted husband and wife team of engineers, Phil and Rebecca Ufkus. And now the machine's being used in hundreds of hospitals around the country and around the world. Which brings me to why I was in Liberia. It turns out that Ebola is one of the easier things for this machine to kill. And I was very proud of the, of the Memphis company that has the license to the device. They contributed 
uh, several units to be used in the Ebola treatment units in Liberia, and they needed somebody who was crazy enough to go and work in that setting, and that was me. And by the way, I couldn't resist, I took a selfie while I was there, too. <laughs> How many times do you get dressed up like a banana ninja warrior, guys? So I just had to go, I couldn't resist. Now, there's a part of the story I haven't told you. And that's that long before I had done anything, I just was talking, 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 I had these ideas. I, I was doing surgery one day, and the anesthesiologist, Dr. Rusty Daniels, was doing this anesthesia, and he said something to me that made me mad. He said, Jeff, you know the difference in a successful entrepreneur and a guy like me and you? Those successful guys, they get an idea, and they do something about it. People like me and you, we just talk about it. He made me mad because he was right, and it was that, that day that I, that I called my brother David and got the ball rolling. Now, today I'd like to be your Rusty Daniels. I'd like to help you move forward with your idea with some steps. First step. When you have these ideas, you always think you'll remember them. You always think you'll say, so I'll remember this sunset, these colors, this poetic words, this formula. You, trust me, you will not. Your best ideas will come into your mind and leave, never to be heard from again. You do a very simple thing, you need to write them down. Write it down. So there's something, cre something magical happens when the creative part of your brain is forced to communicate to the part of your brain that can spell and it can write, and it makes things move forward. So I always have a journal with you and write these things down. That's why all the great thinkers of history, from Sir Isaac Newton to Darwin to Einstein to Mother Teresa, they all kept journals, write it down. Next thing is be very conscious about and deliberate about making a network of people that can do the things that you cannot do for yourself. Listen, I don't know how to wire a circuit board, I don't know how to program a voice module, I, don't, I certainly can't market or sell anything, and so I, but I found people who could. And as you create that network, do two things. Be very free about giving them some ownership in the idea, not control, that's a different thing, but some ownership in the idea, and also write it down. The last thing is the simplest and absolutely the most critical. You ready? And that's an issue of timing. And guess what? The time is now. For those of you who delay one more day taking the steps to make your idea happen, the vast majority it will never happen. It will never happen. Listen, don't be fooled by these fantasy television shows. The corporate world's not looking for smart people with great ideas. There are always somebody out there who's smarter than you are, and they probably work for those same corporations you're talking about. What they're looking for is a process that has been done. They're looking for a, a, an, a, a product that has been made. They're looking for a manuscript that has been written and it has been edited. You need to move forward. Don't let the sun set tomorrow until you've taken the steps to make your idea happen. I started this talk by telling you that there's enough talent in this room to do amazing things. I believe that's true. It's also true that every problem has a solution, all of them. Everything from hospital-acquired infections to Ebola to cancer to the world water crisis, they all have a solution. Most commonly, those solutions come in the form of assembling a puzzle from pieces that are already within your reach. Go and do something great. Thank you very much for your time.